There is a word for us on this Sunday morning. Amen. Found in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 4 and verse 18. Romans chapter 4 and verse 18. There's a word there for us on this Sunday morning. You'll find these words recorded, reading from the New International Version. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Amen. You may be seated. That is the word of God for the people of God. And we pray that God's word would go forth and not return Amen. For the time that we have, I want to preach to you this Sunday morning, keep the faith. That's, that's all I want to talk to you about this morning is keep the faith. Jude writes that we have to contend for the faith. Because there's something out there that's trying to make you lose your faith. There's something out there that's trying to make you not believe, not trust, not hope. And Jude says that we must contend for it. In other words, you got to fight for your faith. When, when trouble comes in your life, don't lose your faith. When things happen that you have no control over and it tries to pull you away from believing whether or not you can trust God or not, whether or not you can go on in life or not, whether your hope is gone, you got to hold on to your faith. Whatever you lose, don't lose your faith because it is your faith that is your connection with God. Hebrews says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we must contend for our faith. Keep the faith. The degree of faith that one places in an object is directly proportional to one's knowledge of the object. For example, consider a person that is terrified of flying. Before they get to the airport, they are filled with anxiety. And as they walk through the airport and board the plane, they are filled with anxiety. They read all of the literature about emergency protocols. They find out what they need to do if an emergency happens and they put on their seatbelt as soon as they get on the plane because they don't trust that the object, which is the plane, will get them to their destination. But something happens after takeoff. Something happens after they get to 36,000 feet, they take off their seatbelt. Uh, they have a snack, or a drink. Uh, they uh, begin to mingle and talk to the person that's next to them. And the question is, what happened? Why did they change? Did faith kick in when they got to 36,000 feet? 
No. What happened was they became familiar with the object that they were trusting to get them to their destination. What, what happened was they found out that the object that they were trusting in to get them to their destination was capable of getting them where they were trying to go. So along the journey, they learned how to trust in the object of their faith. And all I'm trying to say to you, child of God, is that along this journey called life, there are going to be some turbulence along the way. There are going to be some anxiety along the way. But if you stay on the journey, you ought to be able to learn by now that you can trust the object of your faith. And the object of your faith ought not be man. The object of your faith ought not be your job. But the object of your faith ought to be your God. You got to trust God. No matter what you are going through in your life, God is able to get you to your destination. And all there's some folk in the house with me today that know that I've been on the journey with him long enough now to know that even when the storms of life are raging, I still believe that he's able to get me to my destination. All of me some folk in the house that's been with him long enough now to know that even though I might run into a little turbulence along the way, I trust him to get me to where I'm trying to go because he's a God that's able to do all things but fail. You see, the, the, the amount of faith that you have in him is determined by the amount of things that you've been through with him. Oh, help me, Lord. You see, when you've been through enough with the Lord and he brought you out on the other side, uh, you got faith in him now that even though something happens in your life that you don't understand it, you don't think you're going to get through, it's because I got experience with him. Oh, I wish I had some folk in the house with me that got history with God. I got history with God because when I was lost in my sin and sorrow, I didn't find him. He found me. I got history with him. When I couldn't see my way, way through and God showed me a way to get through what I was going through. He brought me out without a doubt and now I got history with him. When my money got funny and my change got strange and I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills uh, but the Lord uh, made a way out of no way. You see now I got history with him. Anybody here know I was in my sick room uh, on my sick bed uh, and the healer they came in and healed my body. You see now I know I got history with him and now I know that even though I'm down right now the God that I serve is still able to lift me back up. Oh, I wish I had some folk that had some history with God. Yeah, I got history with him. I know him now. And he may not come when I want him. He may not show up when I want him. He may not do it the way I want him to. But I only have some witnesses in the house that understand that when God shows up, he's always on time. Because he's an on time God. Yes, he is. And whenever he shows up, he's always on time. You remember the story? You remember when he showed up at Lazarus and Mary said that, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But Jesus said, you need to understand something. I am. The resurrection and the life. You got to understand that if I don't raise him on this side, when I get over on the other side, the Bible says uh, that the dead in Christ shall be the first to rise and we that remain shall be caught up in the air with him. He's going to rise again. You see, when you got history with God, when things happen, you don't panic. You don't lose your mind. You don't throw in the towel. You wait. Because Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord 
shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You see, this man that we're talking about in the text, Abraham, had history with God. Abraham was called the friend of God. They had history together. He, he, he trusted God. He tried God. And he triumphed with God. Let's see how he did it. Uh, Abraham had been called the father of faith. Because he gives us this example of what it means to hope against hope. He, he, he gives us this example in how to believe when you really don't have anything to believe in. He gives us this example on how to keep on pressing forward when you really don't know where you're even going. He shows us that we've got to have faith. We've got to keep it no matter what comes our way. Abraham shows us, first of all, that we must trust God. Simple principle. Trust God. And Abraham shows us that we must trust God with that which is unknown, and we must trust God with that which is unseen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's easy to trust when I can see. But God calls for us to trust the unknown and the unseen. You remember the story in Genesis chapter 12 where the Bible says in verses 1, the Lord had said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to a land that I will show you. Uh, he, he says, and I'm going to bless you. Uh, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. He tells Abraham, he says, Abraham, I need you to trust me to go to a place that you don't even know nothing about. Yeah. Yeah. If you want my blessings. He, he tells him not only go to a place that you don't know nothing about, but go to a place that you have not seen before. If you want my blessings. Yeah. And all I'm trying to tell you today is that even though you can't see where he's trying to carry you, and even though you don't know why he's carrying you, you got to trust him and keep on walking. For the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. The Bible declares that we walk by faith and not by sight. And the Bible declares that Abraham, in verse number four, Abraham left not knowing where he was going because he trusted God. Why is God trying to carry you for your blessing? And you won't go because you can't see it. And you won't go because you don't know. That's why you need God. Because what you can't see, he sees. What you don't know, he knows. And if we're going to keep our faith, and if we're going to get God's blessing, we've got to be willing to go where we don't know and where we don't see. Trusting that God will bring us to what he wants us to be. Now trust God. Our verb says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understandings, but in all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Are you walking with him? Are you trusting him? Because it doesn't require a whole lot of faith for that which is seen. But for that which is not seen. Faith is the substance of things not seen. We, we, we've got to be able to trust God 
even when we are dealing with the unknown and with the unseen. And if you're going to trust God, you must also try God. Amen. If you're going to trust God, you got to try God. Yeah, and I'm not talking about uh, testing God, uh, but I'm trying to get you to understand here, if you're going to trust him, then you got to step out in faith. Uh, it's just like when we came in this sanctuary, uh, you, you saw the pew, you trusted the pew, and you tried the pew. You didn't examine it to see if it would hold you up or not. If you didn't examine it to see if somebody had taken the screws out of it and you would fall down. But you trusted the pew. And you tried the pew. And you found out that the pew held you up. And all I'm trying to tell you here, the same principle that you use to trust the pew and try a pew, it's the same principle that you got to use to trust God and try God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We always say to God, God, if you show me, I'll believe. But God says to us, if you believe, I'll show you. And we must try God with our most vulnerable things. And we must try God with our most valuable things. Yeah. Amen. All of us got some vulnerability. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There are some areas where we're weak at. Or we have to deal with weaknesses. And that, those are those areas that you got to try God. Amen. You tried calling your friends, but they weren't able to help you. You tried uh, calling uh, some uh, people that you trusted, but they could help you. But have you tried God with that thing that's vulnerable to you? Have you tried God with that area where you're vulnerable in your life that it seems to always trip you up? It also seems to always pull you down. That area in your life where you're vulnerable, where you are susceptible to falling, have you tried God? We try everything else. We got to get to a point in our lives where we don't make God our last resort. But God is my first choice. When I'm dealing with a temptation that's going to pull me out of the will of God, I can't uh, wait until I get in that situation and it caused me to fall but I got to try God before I get in that situation. Jo Joseph would tell you that Potiphar's wife came at me with everything that she had. And Joseph said, because I tried God, I made up my mind, I cannot stay here. So he ran out and left his coat. Mm. What, what are you willing to run off and leave behind in order to please God? What people are you willing to leave behind in order to please God? You see, God calls for us to try him with the most vulnerable things that we have, but he also calls us to uh, try him with the most valuable thing that we have. And that is our life. Do you not know that your life is more valuable than what you put on? Do, do you not know that your life is more valuable than what you lay down in, what you drive? Yeah. Don't you know that your life is the most valuable thing that you have? And when was the last time that you tried your life with God? Yeah. If God gave you life, then God knows what your life will look like. Yeah. And if you want your life to match up with what God wants it to be, then you got to seek God about your life. Yeah. Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man 
They're walking down in the council, Lord, the ungodly don't sit in the way with sinners, don't stand in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And whatsoever he doeth shall not perish, but prosper. When was the last time you tried God for your life? Instead of, oh, don't do it. Instead of getting them numbers. When was the last time you tried God to prosper your life? Uh, rather than going... Uh, try God God knows how to get you where you need to go because he gave you life Jeremiah 29 11 said, I know the plans that I have for you plans to prosper you and not harm you God said if you want to know what to do with your life try me with your life the most valuable thing that you've got Abraham tried God because in Genesis chapter 22, the very song that they had prayed for, God told Abraham, take him and offer him as a sacrifice on a mountain that I will show you. Abraham's most vulnerable, his child, and Abraham's most valuable, his child, he tried him with God. The Bible said he laid him down on the altar and drew back uh, the knife to take his son's life. But uh, he heard a voice said, Abraham, Abraham, do thy son no harm, for that is a ram caught in the thicket. And Abraham said, from this point on, I name this place Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. And you got to know that when you are trusting God and when you try God with the most vulnerable thing and the most valuable thing that you have, you can understand uh, that God will provide. Oh, I wish I had some folk in the house with me that know that God will provide. If you know that God will provide, you ought to be able to say yes. Because when you try God and you trust God, that shows us that you'll triumph with God. <laughs> you'll triumph with God. You, you, with God, you're going to win. With God, there is no failure in God. Victory is in God. And no matter what you have to deal with in your life, no matter what you have to go through in your life, if you will trust God and if you will try God, you will triumph with God. Abraham shows us that we can triumph with God over our inconsistencies. Over our inconsistency. And he also shows us that we can triumph with God over our insufficiency. Now, not only can you win with God over your inconsistency, but you can win with God over your insufficiency. You, you, you know, Abraham is called the father of faith, and many of us believe that because he is called the father of faith, he's a perfect individual. But no. Abraham not perfect. Abraham got some inconsistencies in his life. Because, because if you remember uh, Sarah and uh, Abraham, uh, when they met Pharaoh, uh, Abraham told Pharaoh that that's my sister. Mm -hmm. And he goes on along in verse chapter 20 of Genesis and also tells uh, Ambilichek that uh, Sarah is his sister. Abraham tells some lies. Uh, he, 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 he's not a perfect man. Uh, you remember Abraham. Abraham's the same one that slept with Hagar. Yeah, he, he had uh, sin in his life. He had some inconsistencies in his life where he did not line up with what God had intended for him. But thank God that God still gave him victory. Oh, Lord, have mercy. God still gave him victory. And I just want somebody here to know that you might not dot every I and you may not cross every T. You may not get it right every time, but you got to make sure that you keep on walking uh, toward the Lord and don't let your faults and failures cause you to turn around. Keep on pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is only in Christ Jesus. And you don't have to worry about the inconsistency in your life. 
we fall down, but we get back up again. Romans 3, 24, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We all got some inconsistency in our lives. But if we stay with the Lord and keep the faith, we can still triumph. Abraham also shows us that we can triumph over insufficiency. You remember, they were trying to have a child and were unable. And when they get in age and past childbearing years, uh, insufficient sets in. They're not able to produce. They're not able to uh, uh, bring about uh, what they desire, they are lacking in an area in their lives. And it is when uh, they are beyond their own ability to do what they are trying to do that God shows up. Yeah. And the Bible said that God shows up in their lives. And they give birth to Isaac, yeah. who is the son of promise, and not Ishmael, who is the son of the flesh. So, so, so God shows up. And give them victory even though they have insufficiency. How in the world can a woman, that the Bible says, her womb is already dead. And, and, and Abraham himself is already past the year of bearing a child. But when God is put into the program, when God is in the middle of the situation, God is able to give you victory even in areas in your life where you are insufficient. All I'm trying to tell you here is that God will make a way out of no way. All I'm trying to tell you is that my God will supply all of my need. All I'm trying to tell you is that you got to trust God and know that God will uh, give you what you need when you need it. You got to keep on looking to the hill from which comes your help, realizing that all of your help comes from the Lord. You got to make sure that no matter what you go through in life, no matter the inconsistency, no matter the insufficiency, Keep the faith. Because if you keep the faith, uh, you got to understand uh, that God will uh, do just what he said. And the Bible said uh, that Abraham didn't waver. Abraham didn't doubt that God was going to do just what he said. But Abraham believed that God would do just what he said. Even though he didn't see it in his life. Even though there was no record of it in his life. He still believed that God was able to do what he was asking him to do. And somebody here today, you just about to give up on God because it seemed like it's taking him too long. You're just about to throw in a towel because he didn't come when you wanted him to. You're just about to give up on him but God said, uh, don't give up on me. He says, I'm working it out for you. You gotta know today that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and God is able to do all things but fail. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or imagine. You gotta trust God. You gotta try God and you will try your with God. Is there anybody here got the testimony? I tried it for myself uh, when I couldn't see my way. I tried it for myself when my burdens got heavy. I tried it for myself uh, when the doctor walked in. Uh, I tried it for myself uh, when daddy died. Uh, I tried it for myself when I didn't know where to go. And somebody here only have the testimony that God made a way out of no way. Anybody here ever tried my God and know he will make a way somehow? Read why I know he will. I tried it for myself. And I know he will if you keep the faith. So I'm right to say it. Question is, when you're at the crossroads, What do you do? When a fork is in the road, what do you do? When the weight of the world is on your shoulders, 
what do you do? When your back is up against the wall, what do you do? The songwriter said, hold on. Hold on. Keep the faith. You got to keep the faith. What do you look to? Where do you turn? Who do you call on when there's nobody to call? Songwriter said, hold on. Keep the faith. So I just want to encourage you today. No matter what your life is looking like, keep the faith. Because God will do just what he said. The text said that had God said that he would be the father of many nations. And the Bible said that he became just what God said. He trusted God. He tried God. And God did just what he said. He told Abraham, Abraham, go out of your tent. Look up. When he was childless. When they were barren. Look up. See the stars. So shall your seed be. But he didn't have no children. Look at the sand and the grain and so shall your seed be. And the Bible says that Abraham hoped against hope that God would do just what he said. When he didn't see it, he still believed God. When he couldn't touch it, he still believed God. When folk were talking about him, why? You still believe in, in that God and he hadn't done what you asked him to do. Abraham still believed amongst the ridicule, the slander, God says, do you still believe? All of the promises of God are yea and amen in him. God is not a man that he should lie. Is he not able to do what he said? But the question is, will you trust him? It may not go the way you anticipated. Will you still trust him? And God calls us today and says, keep the faith. I'm working it out for you. Can I tell you this? When God works it out, it's fixed. And he fixed it for you over 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulders he bled, suffered, and died. He fixed it. And his final words were, it's finished. And if he said it's finished, it's finished. Now all you got to do is walk in it. You're more than a conqueror. Don't let life make you feel as if you can't win. You can win with the Lord on your side. There may be one today 
that does not know him in the pardon of their sins. You may not know him as your redeemer. We offer you Jesus. The doctrine declares you can come candidate for baptism. You can come be a letter of Christian experience. The main thing is that you come. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And he said, I will give you rest. Is that one today? Is that one? Amen. We see that there is room. There's none, but there's still room. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now. That Father, even though life seems hard at times, we'll trust you. Father, we thank you, dear God, that Father, even in our most vulnerable situations, we thank you that you never left us alone, but that you kept us in the midst of it all. Father, we pray, dear God, for some, oh God, that may be in the fight of their life, fighting anxiety, fighting bereavement, fighting conditions, fighting discouragement. Father, they may be in a fight, oh God, for their very soul. Father, help them to win the fight. Father, we come, oh God, lifting them up to you. Because we know that you're able, dear God, to supply all of their need. Father, I'm asking you, dear God, strengthen their faith. Father, I'm asking you, dear God, Father, walk with them and talk with them. And let them know, dear God, that, Father, you are right by their side. Father, we pray, dear God, for any that may not know you, reveal yourself to them. Father, we lift up to you all bereaved families. Father, we lift up to you all those that are on their sick bed. Father, heal their afflictions, oh God. Comfort those that, oh God, that are dealing with death in their family. But Father, we pray to God for each one of us. Father, some of us have been on the battlefield for a long time. And Father, we have not got weary yet. Father, we thank you, dear God, for the warriors, oh God, that have been on the battlefield. Continue to keep them and lead them. Now, Father, we pray to God that, Father, you, oh God, would help us to trust you. And, Father, we be mindful to give you the praise. And we be mindful to give you the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't you put your hands together get God a hand drop of praise in his house. Amen. Amen. We thank you so much for your attention. We thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, we thank you so much for your amen. Amen. For we do know that life doesn't come with any guarantees, but it does come with a guarantor, and that is Jesus Christ. He'll be with you all the way. Amen. Amen.